Hello, everybody. Welcome to another podcast. Uh, podcast episode 10. 10, I believe. Is it time? episode 10? Time flies. Anyway, um, I, today I have on my friend Chris Torres, who I've known for about 11 years. We, we started, in, uh, at least I started, when I started in MMA, he's one of the first training partners I had. And one of the first friends I made when I moved up to the Binghamton area um, about 11 years ago. And we're still friends to the day. You know, we, we iron sharpens iron. So um, he's a good guy to talk to. And we get into some topics about mixed martial arts, his ideas on martial arts. He's owned gyms. He's, he does personal training. And he's still, tra- he's still a pro fighter right now. And he also grew up with a one John Jones. Okay, so he's got a little bit of insight about John and a few opinions about what's going on with him currently in his life. And, uh, well, yeah, we just, we just, you know, reminisce on the past and, and, and where we see ourselves in the future. So um, it's a pretty good podcast, and I hope you enjoy it. It's uh, Just a Thought Podcast, Episode 10, I think. All right, so Rico, what's up, man? What's or should up, I man? say Chris? I, I don't know why I'm calling you Rico still. Like, we're still in our early 20s and stuff like that. But um, how long have we been friends, brother? We, what, I think a little more than 10 years, right? Yeah, a little bit more than that. Yeah. Right around the time when I moved up in the Binghamton area about 11 yep. years ago. Yeah, man. Yep, yep. And, um, yeah, I'm, I, so I had started, uh, I had started uh, MMA roughly in the summer of uh 2009 somewhere around and i think it was a couple months after that that i met you and yeah. uh and you started training what like what got you into uh what got you into training in, in uh, mma um in the training martial arts i i had done boxing as a kid um just like later on in high school and we did you know just a lot kind of just messing around with friends and um kind of as you know time went on MMA got popular in the area when John started to really get big into it and Tamden, uh, McCrory, Eric Charles. Yeah. Um, that kind of was like the only option when I, when I uh, was looking for a boxing school to train yeah. at. I couldn't find anything. There was nothing around. Yeah. And, uh, and it was no slight on any of you know, martial arts schools, but there was just no real – nobody was doing just boxing. There was no trainers. Everything was MMA, so – yeah. I went to uh, CNY MMA. I thought I knew what I was doing. I could, you know, I, I could throw hands and I was fine with that. And then as soon as I went to MMA rounds, like, man, those guys like picked me up, dropped yeah. me on my head, slammed me everywhere. It was like I didn't know anything. And uh, that now, feeling of vulnerability made me addicted. I'll tell you what. Now, slamming on your head, if you fall from that height that you're at right now, I see you orbiting in space. If you fall from there on your head, I don't think it'd be too good for you. Nah, I would not be good at all. <laughs> but it makes me feel comfortable out here. And this is where yeah. I like to be. So Yeah, that's that's for sure. That's a better view than the view that we got down here, that's for sure, man. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no man. COVID out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only only some radiation, but COVID definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, stuff. for sure, for sure. Um so yeah, man. So when you when I met you, you had you had just um got out of a prison. You told me at the time, and yeah. um, and so talk about like what sort of impact did um. First of all, how long were you in? So when I had gotten in trouble, um, I went away for just short of eight months, okay. and uh, it. A lot of people say, wherever you got like for certain things, you got to get to like your your rock bottom, and for me that was like rock bottom like spent my 21st birthday watching the super bowl through like a little hole in the wall you know kind of thing and it was just that was my rock bottom um so i mean the impact i guess that that had to me it was kind of like you know i got myself into trouble i I didn't really have anywhere to go but up and uh again at the time you know prior boxing and kind of like so many ways I, i didn't like fight and lash out so often but just boxing was just something that I was good at something yeah. that kind of me and my friends would do other than basketball all day I and mean, we play basketball all day and then box at night when the lights came yeah. out the courts and that was just kind of something I got into and uh, so I came home and I was like I need something to get my aggression and my because I was mad at myself and mad yeah. at my decisions and maybe even sometimes like jealous of my friends because I would think about like here I am and locked up away for bad decisions that I made and they're out like at school, you know, getting their degrees and 
getting shit done and you know i wasn't so i kind of just put this fuel in my you know under my ass that i gotta like i gotta do something you know i gotta like pick it up i gotta i don't know i gotta make something of myself or do you know do something just productive that just makes at least makes me proud yeah winning a fight is a good feeling if you you know if you've you've done it so yeah yeah but you know one of the things i was discussing with someone before um, on the previous podcast, uh, actually our old coach, uh, Jason Porter. And uh, we were talking about, you know, it is true that, you know, as a kid, I did enjoy fighting a lot. Um, and, and I imagine that you did as well. A lot of people who get into mixed martial arts um, were probably scrappy kids. But at the same time, there's a certain reason in the traditional martial arts that a lot of parents will send their kids to the traditional martial arts to teach them a little bit of discipline and, and teach them a little bit of that. There's an element to the martial arts that, uh, that I feel has been lost slightly in, in MMA, which is teaching a bit of discipline, teaching a little bit of, of maybe self-control. And, um, and, you know, I mean, talk about that a little bit. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you think? How, do you think we've lost any of the element of the traditional martial arts um, since uh, mixed martial arts have become so popular? I think that still we just a lot of us forget that I mean MMA is cool and it's a way to compete and kind of show off your best studs and how good they are at their gym at you know fighting under a rule set but I I think still at the very end of the day like we forget that you're trying to teach people to be able to defend themselves and to keep themselves safe in certain situations situational awareness Um, and a lot of it just becomes like a huge like you know just an ego battle between people on you know who can outdo each other you know can i never get tapped like you know i'm not going to tap to a lower bow or an upper bow it's not going to tap to a lower bow yeah. um and it's kind of made like a toxic in my opinion this weird like toxic atmosphere of like you know who's who's got the you know who's got the bigger dick basically you know and it's just yeah. I, i'm not really with that I, I enjoy it because it helps me stay on a straight and narrow and you know i'd like to know that i'm safe and in 99 percent of situations i know that i don't gotta worry about much yeah and i know that that um <clears throat> you know you came up in the mixed martial arts we came up originally under some of the sim- similar similar co- uh, coaches um and i know subsequently you've you've opened up your own gym what is that something that you always wanted to do or you know um I guess as I grew up through the years, I always just found myself leaving work to sprint to the gym or figuring out how to get a work schedule to be a customer, you know, work with the gym. So it finally got to the point where I was like, listen, I either got to make gym my work or, you know, just fully commit to it, you know? So I got to the point, you know, I I had left a job, um, you know, focus hard on training and, uh, then I moved up to Syracuse and I was able to get, a, you know, good opportunities as different kickboxing instructors and, you know, doing personal training, um, you know, and I was able to go to other gyms and it just got to the point, even at like a lot of the other gyms, like people just didn't take training as serious as I do. They didn't, they weren't there as much. There wasn't people getting in, you know, rounds. Um, yeah. So eventually I got to the point, you know, I got, with uh Shane Manley who's he's still in Syracuse and uh I mean Shane he trains he gets after it Mm -hmm. I mean you don't got to worry about like you know like Shane a lot of guys don't even start from their feet in martial arts anymore in BJJ particularly everybody only just sits they only just sit on the ground and you know and it's cool and that works too but sitting on the ground I know that we're not like fighting right then and there but sitting on the ground is not an ideal way to defend yourself if someone's about ready to attack you. It's just, yeah. it's not sensical. Um, yeah. And that's not why I train martial arts, you know, like I like to learn a lot of aspects, but anyways, I got with Shane and uh, we got our gym open and we had a great group of guys. I mean, we got after it. Everybody was there to train and go hard. Yeah. Um, and there was no like sour feelings or people feeling, you know, hurt because they got slammed or something, you know? Yeah. You gotta. I think you gotta embrace some of those things in a way, um, but also be able to help you know other people out and share good knowledge with other people. So, okay, and um, so I know you're someone who 
and of course, stop me if I'm wrong, but I know you're someone who has always talked about for a long time, um, at the very least, about owning your own, um, you know, piece of the pie, you know, starting your own business, working for yourself. Um, what's, what, what, what motivates you? What fuels you to do such a thing as opposed to um, just getting a regular nine to five like everybody else? What's the, what's, to me, what's it's just of all my life, I've either, you know, even when I worked, I used to work at an optical center as a manager and the optical center like was kind of struggling. And to be honest, like I, I learned the business by, by being in the business and I saw how I directly impacted that business by making that, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars in a year. I mean, just making a ton. And when times got tough or if they, you know, they didn't like certain people, they were ready to always ready to fire people, always ready to, you know, shorthand people, cut people's throat and do it through me. And it wasn't like, I didn't enjoy being the puppet master for someone else that didn't want to do the right things in a sense, you know, and I, in so many ways in business, I get it, but I didn't want to have to be that puppet master. And I, I didn't like the idea that I was making someone else all their money. And I, like I say, I preach it to everybody, like make your own money, be your own boss. You know, don't let people basically get in you, you know, get in your pockets and take advantage of you. Yeah. Um, the most that you can work for yourself and create your own income is the better you're going to be. I mean, like right now, like I, I, everybody is, freaking out about this pandemic and the financial aspects and i've known this and everybody should have known this and i've said this for years that brick and mortar has has gone and left and brick and mortar is you know having a store like starbucks a stationary area that's gone all of that's gone everything <laughs> is about yeah. speed instantaneous can i get it delivered here yeah you know, that's via true. the internet can i click it boom and it shows up you know like I, I've always, you know, there's things like in time, it's going to be a full out coffee shop where there is no Starbucks center. You just order the coffee on your phone and then someone comes to your door and brings your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you, yeah. everything's going to be quick. Yeah. And I have my brains always clicking like, what's the next step? What's the next thing? Yeah. You know, what's the next domain name so I could buy that first and sell it back? <laughs> did, did you buy just a thought vlog yet or no? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, you bought it already? Okay. Yeah, it's, I bought it for twelve dollars. So you, oh, a little bit, you let me know what it's worth to you, and okay, we can negotiate. Okay, we'll we we'll negotiate down the line. Yeah. So, I'll have my lawyer call your lawyer. How's that? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> my lawyer is Google Domain, so you tell oh, him to call, man. I'll tell him to call Google. Okay, I got you. <laughs> um, so yeah, man. So you, I know you're living in Syracuse now, and you did mention some of the reasons you moved up there, but. Um, where are you from originally? Where did you go to, you know, where did you grow up and stuff? Uh, well, I grew up in Binghamton. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I grew up in Binghamton. I basically lived there most of my life. I lived in Cortland for a bit. Um, <clears throat> I liked Binghamton. Uh, it's where my parents are from. I went to high school there. I went to a high school in Maine and well. Um, it was a pretty good city to me. I, I enjoyed it. I just, I wanted to expand more and get somewhere a little bit bigger. Um, yeah. as I was turning pro in, uh, MMA in Syracuse, um, it worked out all right. Um, and now I've actually moved out to Rochester. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. To get, uh, yeah, yeah. I moved out to Rochester last month. Um, okay particularly uh, to my girlfriend has family out here. And then uh, there's a really, I mean, what I consider and many consider one of the top schools in the entire country. It's a 10th planet school under Chris Herzog. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and they got, you know, if, if you're in the martial arts world, like 10th planet is top notch. And I mean, oh, yeah, for just, sure. yeah, just alone, Chris Herzog, you know, by himself is, I mean, the, of the top trainers around yeah. period. Um, so I'm out here, I'm going to train with them. Um, he's got Walter McDonald's and also just sick kickboxing coach. So mm. I just, it's a lot more competitors. It's a bigger, even bigger area than Syracuse, bigger than Binghamton. Yeah. Um, quite oh, wow. a bit bigger, both of them. So there's just yeah. more training partners, more opportunity for me, you know, and I'm, I'm 32 now, so I probably got maybe six, seven more years of fighting and competing yeah. at a higher level. Um, and then I'll just, I mean, I'll keep training always, but that's kind yeah. of where I want to like end up my, uh, martial arts career. 
Yeah. And um, so have you ever thought about going, uh, going overseas and training just, just for the experience? Like, I know a lot of people go to, will go to Thailand and, and do some traditional kickboxing over there, or at least get lessons from traditional, um, you know, Thai, Muay Thai fighters over there. Is that something you ever consider doing? Um, I'll do it, but just at this point in my life, the way like just my 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 uh, just my priorities are, and my like, you know, I have a few businesses I run online. Um, I got two kids. I have a girlfriend. I got dogs. Congrats on a new baby, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. So just how my priorities are, that's I will eventually, but it's not at the top of my list at the yeah. time. So and like again, like I said, I'm I'm super happy to be here in Rochester. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they got another, you know, they got a boxing gym out here, Fight Factory, that, again, I mean, they got just a bunch of sick boxers out here, so mm-hmm. I have okay. more than enough opportunity to get the, you know, good training in, good people, um, experienced people who legitimately know what they're doing, you know, they're not just yeah. YouTube stars or, you know, yeah. did a few competitions and called themselves a champ, you know, they're, yeah. they're real, real martial artists. You got guy, any guys over there in sort of any other bigger or, organizations or regional organizations? Um, that are currently competing in them. I, I know they got a, they have a few pros that have done, you know, as far as like Ring of Combat, CFFC. Okay. Um, I don't think they have any guys that have gone quite to UFC or Bellator as of recent. Okay. Um, I guess I really, and I try to be careful with that a lot of times, like don't chase those just – one-off fights. I mean, there's, I know a few guys that have fought on Bellator and the only reason they got on Bellator is because of their networking connections. Yeah. Um, you know, or they're local. They want to fill the right card and get, you know, them to sell tickets. So yeah. you got to go, you know, in the martial arts world, like it's small, you know what I mean? It's a very small world. So you, you can find out who's legitimate and who's not, and who's yeah. really put in the work and who hasn't. So Oh, oh yeah, I mean, I I don't mean to advocate to say that you know somebody has to have fought in a bigger organization to be, you know, a legitimate um, instructor or martial artist of any kind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so yeah, there's there's tons of great gyms up here in the Northeast in New York State and stuff like that um, that you can get lots of get, get your tools sharpened. Yeah, and it's and, uh, dude, it's crazy. I'm telling you, you go to some of these gyms, like even just particularly like Chris's uh, Tenth Planet. I mean, these guys will be like the regular guy that is, um, you know, he owns a construction business. Yeah. He comes to the gym four or five nights a week. He's a brown belt in uh, in Tenth Planet Jiu Jitsu, and then in their you know in their belt ranking system for uh, Bang Muay Thai, he's a, he's a black belt. And he just, you know, happens to own a construction business, never competed a day in his life. Mm-hmm. But he'll come in and put the work in on, you know, beat me up, beat up a lot of guys that are very experienced. And these are just guys that do it as a hobby. So it's like, it's pretty incredible that you would see, like, I mean, I know there's some guys in, in Syracuse that are like that, that haven't even barely competed. They're like lawyers. And I mean, and they walk in the gym and scrape everybody with a smile on their face barely losing their breath and you're like man like have you fought have you competed and they're like nah you know i just i got four kids and you know i'm an attorney and i'm busy and I'm like, man yeah. and he's a monster <laughs> he's just yeah. he's a soldier ready to just wipe yeah. out a whole <laughs> platoon by himself you know and yeah. you know and so for martial arts so you got to keep your man you got to keep yourself low on the totem pole like if you just keep yourself high in the totem pole like that's that's cool amongst your friends but yeah you ain't gonna get any better. Okay, so I mean that's that's wonderful. So your your all your goal. I know you're you're uh, you're pro, right? You're pro fighter. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. your goal is to complete compete. Uh, how often you you plan to you plan to do um, a regular thing or just I, be like uh, one of those guys? I mean, I'll compete where I feel that the money's worth it, and if I you know if I like the matchups and how my I don't compete because I need the money. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't compete because like I have anything like in particular to prove because I, I to prove because I've competed a bunch. Yeah. Um, I just, I compete cause I like it. It makes me feel good. So if you know, the time in my life and my training's right, I got the right people around me, you know, the right support, then bang, I'm ready to compete. So it kind of just is, uh, like I said, I don't fight because I'm hungry or because I need the money or anything. Like I, I could not fight again in 
I'll be fine. Like, I, I mean, I don't, you know, low level pro fighters, we don't make enough money for it to really change our lives substantially. Yeah. Obviously if I got a big contract, it could, but yeah. even if like, I, I still, you know, I, I live comfortably enough with the businesses that I have that I don't, I don't need it. It's just something that I like that I enjoy. Yeah. And it, we kind of we kind of lost you there for a second. Yeah. Uh, better. Lost. Yeah, yeah, it's better now. Okay. Yeah. What yeah. So you ultimately you're seeing very fueled to uh to, to sort of you know own your own businesses and things like that. Like like some of uh, tell me some of the um like like tell me what 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 really fuels you like what is. I know you watch a lot of motivational videos and stuff like that. Like people, who are some of the people that that you use to keep you sort of motivated and keep your head on straight? Some of the people, Eric Thomas, Big ET. um, He's a motivational speaker. Gary Vaynerchuk. He's a big, just business mogul. Um, And even believe it or not, I I listen to a lot of the breakfast club and, uh, and Charlemagne, the God, man. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I haven't been in a while, but yeah. Yeah, he's just, he's all about, like, his, like, all these guys, they're all just about, like, be independent, like, don't, don't, don't let another man, like, tell you what to do, you know, and, like, I just, I like to see everyone to be able to make their own decisions and make their own money and not have somebody else, like, dip into their pockets, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and that's what all those guys are about, they're all just, like, every single one of them, it's about investing smart, you know, like, why do you think I buy domain names? I didn't just make that up. Like, I mean, buying domain names is a smart thing to do. People make legitimate good money on those types of things. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's off of just basic business, like modern business tactics that people are doing today. Yeah. But those guys, I mean, they just, they motivate me to, cause I, I like my freedom. Like I don't, I don't have to ask someone to go on vacation. You know, I don't need to look for, like pto if i want to go somewhere you know i i work from home i wake up when i want to and i go to sleep when i want to and i I think that everyone should have that or try to at least make themselves that opportunity now if you got to work a job for five years to save up 80 90 000 to maybe set yourself up for that opportunity then for sure do it but i see people that just work the same job every day with no aspirations to go further than that and you know, they got to put in 50 hours a week for somebody else. I don't know. Yeah. I, I would, I'd rather put that 50 hours and, and gamble on myself. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, I had somebody ask me the other day um, if I was going to go back to school to get my RN. And it is something that I've, I've tossed around a few times um, mm-hmm. in the last few years and stuff like that. But I was thinking to myself, I mean, you gotta, look, first of all, if you want to be able to guarantee yourself an income. Not necessarily. Okay. I was going to say college will guarantee income, but not, not, that's not even the case. I mean, you got to really be smart in what you choose to do in college because you can go to college and get a, a master's degree in, in something like liberal arts or something, and you're still not employable and you can't, you yeah. can't make any money. You know what I'm saying? So they, they get good degrees. They work for a job for six, seven years. And then when the company's tired of them, they fire them. Yeah. And then, that person, I have a friend right now, you know, he started making okay money, built himself up to damn near a hundred thousand a year, you know, after six, seven years with the company, the company lets him go, you know, they hire two people for half the price. And then when he goes to find a job again, these companies all offer him 40,000 a year yeah. off a of college degree type, you know, no, yeah, that's crazy to me. I'd rather take that money or that time that I had and invest and try to figure out that same exact thing and create my own business, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. make my own money. Yeah. I mean, is that, is that anything tied to, to, to need to, to leave a legacy or anything like that? I mean, would you be one of those parents that would leave something for your kids and to help them get a head start, or you'd make them round, work their way up the way you, the way you were? Um, I, I don't know. I don't, Anything I really had, I kind of, I don't know. I've never really, cons- I don't really care about leaving a legacy. It's, again, it's for me, it's just about like my freedom. Like okay. if I, if I want to work, I work. If I don't want to work, I, you know, I don't work. If I want to go out on the weekend and party and do whatever the hell I feel like, I, you know, like I'm not saying in any type of like super condescending way, but I just, I like to be able to have that freedom. I don't, it's, I can't remember who's, um, 
as a matter, it's Dame Dash. He has this interview and he's like, you know, I don't want to call another man daddy. And I agree with that. Like, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's true, man. If you haven't seen that, the Dame Dash Breakfast Club interview. Just oh, I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen all three of his interviews on the I think the one of the first ones he got kind of him and uh, what's his name? That's what I'm referring Envy. to. Him and yeah. DJ Envy kind of got into it a little bit. <laughs> That's the one I'm. What do you call him? A chatty patty or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watch that stuff too, bro. Yes. I, I mean, yeah, I, I like saying. to get I like to get motivated. You know what I'm saying? I like to watch. Um, like I'll watch. I mean, I don't know about you, but I watch Joe Rogan, and everybody I know watch watches Joe Rogan. He's he's big on motivation too. That that dude does not stop. You know? He has yeah, yeah. probably four jobs. I like Joe Rogan. I like him, but sometimes he's just like he is a little crazy sometimes. So I I don't advocate everything he says. You know what I yeah. mean? Sometimes it's kind of like flat earthers. Like I like to just go with Joe what Joe Rogan says just to hype people up. But yeah, yeah. But Joe Joe Rogan is something else. I enjoy I enjoy Joe Rogan. I, I like his podcast. I like his take on a lot of things. So yeah. Well, I mean, you, the thing about it is you're not gonna. Uh, First of all, he's just a regular dude, just like everybody else, just like me and you. He's not going to be right all the time. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah. He's not going to be right about all his opinions, and his opinions are going to change. I know a lot of people say Joe is a flip-flopper, and that is kind of annoying to me, too. Yeah. But what I look to Joe is, Joe is doing exactly what you're talking about, which is he's working for himself. And, you know, he, he's the only person that, can work, that works for the UFC that can talk talk shit about about not Dana White but talk shit about the company or yeah, whatever yeah. the case is and get away with it yeah. because he's a boss you know what I'm saying yeah yeah so that that's you know that's exactly what you know sort of what you're talking about there oh, you know. yeah he uh, yeah it's true though and it's again like everything he does is you know he's got his podcast he's got his stand-up comedy and he he takes that money home he may send us like a lot of these things like I was listening. He was talking about like he damn near is renting these halls out, and when he's selling those tickets, he's taking that money in. Like this is no like weird company that's putting it out there and like producing it for him. Like he's really going out and doing this stuff himself, which is is legit, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, man. So backtracking a little bit. Um, so going back to Endicott, there going to main end wall. Um, you went to school with John with John Jones, didn't you? Yes. Well, I didn't go to school with John Jones. I went to church with John. Oh, you went to church with him? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We uh, we were all like raised in the church. I mean, we were the kids on Sunday that no matter what happened, sun Saturday night, our parents made us go. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, no matter what kind of condition we'd show up the night before, <laughs> we were at church the next day. So oh, sweat. It was hot. It was one of that messed churches. up on Saturday night and clean on Sunday morning. Huh? Yeah, you know, I mean, like that church at the time, I don't know, maybe now, hopefully, but that time they didn't have air conditioning. I mean, so <laughs> you wake up the next, you know, set, summer, Sunday morning, and oof, yeah, you really thought about Jesus, that's for sure. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, so you told me that, um, I mean, I remember years ago, you told me that uh, you were you witness to when John had started, started in MMA? Say that again, um, sir. You did you? I think I remember you telling me years ago when when John had got it, got into MMA originally. You were there and you saw yeah his start. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of backtracks to like my trouble time. So <clears throat> when John was slowly starting to get into MMA, he was going driving up from Binghamton to Portland to train. And at yeah. the time, it was like a very small like church, like right off like one of the first exits of Portland. Um, and Ryan Ciatoli was running at the time. And I mean, and this was, God, I mean, when I was 20, so about 12 years ago. Mm. So, and of course I was still friends with John and every, you know, he would have told me, he's like, yo man, like I'm doing this Mark Sharks thing. Like, you know, you're, you think you're tough, da, 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 you talk that shit, like you should come up and I would come up and train and I didn't go as consistently as he did, yeah. but you know, we would drive up to Cortland, we'd go and train and Ryan Ciatoli would train it there. Uh, Al Jermaine Sterling would be there, who's now yeah, in the yeah. UFC. Yeah. Um, Eric, uh, Eric, um, Eric Henry's there. He trains mm -hmm. these guys up in Cortland now. Okay. Um, so there was like a lot of these real, like, kind of the like original guys, like the Bomb Squad guys, like very early on. Mm -hmm. And I would go up there and I would train with him. Um, and I probably went maybe like four or five times. But like I said at the time, I was just. I was more focused on being that like cool guy, like that 
the guy with yeah. the money and just being involved with the wrong people and the wrong things. And, mm -hmm. you know, as crazy as it sounds, like John took the better path than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I went down the bad path and John continued training. You know, yeah. he maybe did his thing in martial arts. And, and I was seeing that, you know, as I got in trouble and I'm in jail and like I'm hearing about it. Man. Oh, is he, is he one of those guys you were talking about that you were like, you're like, oh man, this dude is, is living his yeah. best life and I'm out here, yeah. you know, messing up and getting, you know. Yeah, straight up. And I, you know, and I was like, man, like, I'm like that, maybe that, you know, I could have almost gotten to that and you know what, I was like seeing him do it and I, you know, I was happy for him, but I was like, man, it just, it sucked, you know, and that's where you start to hit that rock bottom. God. Yeah. And like, right. that could have been me. <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah. i'm just like i could be out doing things or like i could be owning a gym i could be you know i could yeah. do all sorts of things and i'm like and i'm not i'm in here like yeah. doing shit you know what i mean like arguing with people about cookies and stuff you know what i mean like yeah argue people about cookies <laughs> yeah <laughs> cookies man. yeah or to or or uh, what do you call it like burritos and things like that like they make their own burritos in jail yeah yeah, yeah, right? yeah. they got all types yeah. of snacks like oatmeal snacks with but tons of like junk food on top of them summer sausage and yeah summer sausage. It, it's just <laughs> not it's not the way to live man yeah. everybody's super tough in there everybody is uh ex tony montana yeah it's just yeah it was just trash <laughs> yeah, that's crazy now, well, I know you uh, you lived in California for a while, um, at yeah. least for a little bit. I, is, was that before you came out of prison or after? That, let me think. That was before, actually. That was before. Okay. Um, at the time, I, you know, I, it was right, yeah, it was right around that time. And uh, I, um, man, that's a long time ago. I'm trying to think of my uh, chronological. It was, it was before... Um, but I went out to, I basically was trying to get back to school, like trying to get things like, you know, just, it was like basically like this ongoing inner battle. Like, should I be that dope boy or should I kind of go to school or, you know, should I play sports or should I just, you know, not. Nah. Um, so at the time I was like, I'm going to move out to Cali. I'm going to kind of just keep things straight. I got some money saved up. Um, so I moved out to Cali and I lived out there with uh, this guy Yao um, from Binghamton. <laughs> I don't know yeah. where he is nowadays, but I lived out there with him for a bit. Um, I did more boxing out there. Um, I did it, you know, a couple like small fights and whatnot out there. Mm -hmm. um, I got really a lot of good stuff out there. I'm telling you, the guy, the guy, I can't remember the name of the boxing gym I trained at, but it was, uh, it was just literally San Bernardino Boxing Club, which is where I lived. Mm -hmm. um and they just had a lot of good guys i mean they were just it was traditional like that like mexican style boxing gym i mean yeah, uh, real, yeah real tough man like just never said no moss right it, dude the beginning of practice was running five miles period like that's just <laughs> that's you, insane that, that's just how you start you go to practice like and they just strap up your shoes everyone get ready together and you just ran laps and it was like this wow. huge soccer field and like, I think it was like six laps was a mile. So you're like, I got to do 30 of these motherfuckers. Wow. And that's just how you started practice was just yeah. straight up. It wasn't even to like tire you out. And this, I mean, I was dog shit tired the first few times, but to them that was just like, let's get our legs loose. Like let's get warmed up because they would get done with their five miles, you know, after the first few times I do it and I'd be, you know, peeled over, falling over on the ground and they're just kind of like getting loose and stretching, you know? So, mm -hmm. It's just a different type of conditioning that people just aren't aware of that exists, basically, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. So, so um, yeah, man. I mean, <clears throat> I, I mean, I like boxing myself a little bit, um, but it was never really my thing. Like, you know, throwing kicks was my thing. Um, yeah. That's what I enjoyed doing. You know, I was one of those kids that um, in the 80s there, because, you know, a little bit, I'm a little bit older than you, <laughs> just a tiny bit. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> a little bit older. We'll Speaking of a little bit older, we'll go with a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, have you noticed how um, as you get a little bit older, everybody wants to grow a beard, or is it, or is it beards that are just coming back in style? Like, what's beards what's it do with the beard, man? No, no, no. Beard, let's be real. Beards just make us look better. If we didn't have a beard, <laughs> beards make me like a nine. If yeah. I didn't have a beard, I'd be like a six. Yeah, <laughs> that's. You know, I remember like women used to say back in the day all the time. Well, not back in the day, because you know, in the seventies and eighties and stuff, beards were in. But yeah. there was a period there, like in the like in the nineties and maybe two thousands, where I would I was hearing all the time, 
women would say, um, you know, I don't like beards, I don't like beards, and stuff like that. But I, I feel like they're coming back in the style now, man. As long as you're like, you kind of like take care of them a little. I feel like a beard is like uh, like a push up bra for a man. Like it just makes you look just a little better. Yeah, it just makes you look a little bit better, a little more yeah. masculine. Yeah, just a, it's just a little push up on your jawline. Just that's true. That's true. Yeah, man. So what, what were we talking about, man? We were talking about California. California. So yeah, California. Like getting older or something like that. <sighs> Shit, man. Yeah, Cali was cra- Cali's a really cool place. If you haven't had an opportunity to. Whether yeah. if you live out there, go out there, make friends out there, go to yeah. a music festival out there, something. Like, just go check yeah, out Cali. I cannot just, wait, man. I would love to. It's just wait. a different, like, movement of people. People are more friendly. There's, there's just, it's a, it's a, at least where I was at, it was a huge, like, melting pot. Like, I mean, my closest friends was, like, this Mexican guy tatted head to toe. The other guy was a blood, I mean, full out blood, like inside out. The other guy was just just normal guy, like kind of like white guy, just very clean cut. And then the other one was this light skinned black dude from England with an English accent. And then that was like my group of friends that hung out together. But we all lived right in the same, yeah, we all lived in the same area, but like we looked like, you know, the, the, he was a Sorreño with a Southerner Mexican. He just okay. looked like he was straight from like the Mexican gutters, you know, and the blood guy just, Everything and how he moved was just everything. Read this, read that. He was cool as shit. You know, we didn't really intertwine our out, outside businesses, obviously. Yeah. Not obviously, but I didn't. I didn't want nothing to do with that. But it was just interesting because we all got along. We all hung out, and even just in a sense, as long as there was no like real beef going on, like everybody out there was friendly with each other. You know what I mean? Like the the black people were nice with the Mexicans. Whites were nice with the black. Everyone got along. It was just. Yeah. It's more of a community feeling out there than it is like New York, at, or at least out here, seems a little, a little more separated. Yeah, I mean, there's there's other parts, um, there's other parts where you you can get that kind of vibe, but California is notorious for that here in in America. I know there's other places like certain parts of Texas. I heard like San Antonio, Texas, or yeah, yeah. I guess for the most part, it'll be big cities and stuff where people are sort of forced to get to know each other, regardless of your skin color or your background. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of times I feel like hate comes from hate comes from ignorance. If you don't understand what you're facing, then you're afraid of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that unfamiliar unfamiliarity. People don't. Yeah. They're not comfortable with it. Another um, place I know that's like that is is like Toronto or you know certain places in Canada. Like what was it? Like three years ago, I went to Toronto for the first time, yeah, and yeah. I I'm sitting there. <laughs> I'm so I'm walking around, okay, and I go into this uh, Caribbean restaurant, of course. And I gave me some curry, of course. <laughs> and uh, I see this like hard, like bald looking, you know, you know, black man, you know, like myself. He comes in there and he's like looking all tough and stuff. And he, he goes up to the lady in the front and he goes, uh, um, excuse me, miss. Let me get that oxtail and rice and peas, please. Thank you very much. And then he gets it. And then he gets his food delivered. He goes, you have a nice day now. And he walks out bad hard. I'm like, wow, that's the nicest hard looking dude I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, <laughs> This man, like he's like holding the door open for people and stuff like that. <laughs> so even over there, like like your dudes that are kind of hard and tough are like nicer. Yeah. You know? I'm seeing like I saw this group of friends sitting down, and uh, one of them was black. And guess what? He was sitting next to. He's sitting next to an Asian. And guess what? The Asian dude was sitting next to which uh, Indian dude. And the Indian dude yeah. was sitting next to next to a white dude. You know, like uh, you know what I'm saying, like. Yeah. So like you know that's a place I I've considered. I I may end up moving to Canada eventually. Who knows. I know the taxes are high over there because, you know, they have a lot of social, um, they believe a lot of social economics and things like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but is there any, any, any other place you consider living, you think? Um, you know, to me, it's martial, it's all just come down to like, almost like martial arts. It's really. like, that, that's like your nucleus. It's just, yeah, where I can yeah. be comfortable and train at is cool. Like my businesses, I could be, like they're all, you know, they're all work at home. Everything I do is logistics, shipping. That works um, out pretty good for you, man. Especially yeah, right now so, with, what's, with what's going on with this pandemic. Yeah, so I mean, I, I can be anywhere. I mean, if I, I can, as long as USPS can hit it, which is anywhere <laughs> in the world, like, yeah, I, I can be there. So yeah. anywhere that's basically comfortable. I mean, right now it's Rochester. Like my girl's family's here. Mm-hmm. Um, we just had a baby. Yeah. There's fucking kick-ass martial arts here. So right yeah. now it's Rochester. That's so until I get older and I feel like we need more warm heat or 
yeah. you know, whatever it be. Maybe, you know, maybe Cali, maybe, I don't know. But yeah. anyways. Maybe Florida just, if it's not on the water by then. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I don't really <laughs> care. Like I said, it's where I'm comfortable. Yeah. Like if there's, yeah. if I go to Florida, it's, I'd have to figure out like, okay, well, what school am I going to train at? Where right. am I going to be? Right. Who's going to be down there? What kind of training is it? Like, because if I go down, I can't go to no like, bum. like as much as I want, almost like want to be in the country and enjoy that space, like. I got to kind of be near some, because without martial arts, it's just. It's boring? Know, just Is it boring for you without martial arts? Yeah, it's boring, man. Like, <laughs> you need the competition, huh? It's not, yeah, maybe it's that competition. Like, I do yeah. love to run. I do love to compete. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it's just, it keeps my mental sanity, like, sh- just yeah. keeps my head on straight. Um, yeah. You know, I, I do like Kind of gives you an outlet a little bit? Yeah, it gives me an outlet. And I, like, I'm not, I don't want to, like, fold to being an aggressive person, but yeah. people have said that, like, oh, like, sometimes you tend to be aggressive. So if I can exert that in some sort of way, it, you know, it makes me feel good. I sleep better at night that way. When I get home, I can sleep. You know, it's easier for me. What, what do you think, what do you think is the, is the reason for that, though? Like, why are you feeling like you're someone who who sort of has that innate aggression or maybe a chip on their shoulder, for instance. Because I'll tell you right now, for me, I know what it is for me. Like, I went through a lot of trauma in my, in my youth, especially, namely below six and under, like seven years old and under, like, like mm-hmm. Diana and places like that. And um, as such, like some of the th- experiences I had there and experiences I had with family members who shall go unmentioned, um, I just sort of had like this chip on my shoulder and stuff like that. Like there's, there's one person in particular when, when I was growing up fighting all the time, I was really angry at one person. Like I'd be, I'd be getting into fight with, fights with other kids at school mm-hmm. and, and I'm not seeing that the kid that I'm fighting with. I'm seeing this, this other person who I felt wronged me yeah, and, yeah. and stuff like that. And I felt like, you know, I needed to, to be strong. Like I needed to not be a weak person. You know, you talk about being a boss. I felt like I needed to be able to def- to protect myself no matter what happens, even if I don't have something hidden nearby like a weapon. And I needed to be able to defend people who I care about because I saw people who I cared about get hurt physically by insane people. And these yeah. type of experiences at a young age kind of molds your mind. So I ended up um, in the 80s. My mother used to take me to see um, Chuck Norris movies. And I remember, and this is before, you know, the whole Chuck Norris meme thing that, get, that got popular for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just doing roundhouse kicks and Bruce Lee was doing flying kicks. And I was like, yo, I want to do that. So I started practicing that stuff. So that, that's between that and just having general, you know, depression, anxiety and, and having anger issues based on some of the experiences I had. That's really what I think fueled me and, and that fire to be a fighter and be a martial artist. Um, so, you know, talk to me about, some of the things you think that sort of fuels you and, and got you to be that scrappy kid and sort of translated molded your life to this point. It's well, it's funny you said the Chuck Norris thing because same thing when I was little, my mom was showing me the Chuck Norris films and you know those little like just how he's just beating people up and uh, like you know she loved watching Bruce Lee films and I would end up watching them as well. Um, and that just kind of put like a it just seemed to me like things were cool, a doctor was cool, a lawyer was cool, but like that pro fighter that people knew about, that was just something different to me. I was like, man, like you could do all these things. You could go to school, you could do this, you could that. Not many people actually get paid to fight or people come to see them to fight. Even if you're on like a high level of amateur, like that's a privilege, you know what I mean? And uh, I think that in so many ways, that concept motivated me. And I had a lot of people from the places I grew up, like just tell me that I couldn't do things or like a lot of just weird racist, racist things that happened in my day, like just from peewee football and like parents calling me brown boy and like, you know, just, you know, people just kind of like taking little digs. Um, Another kid called me like the sand, a sand N word, you know, a few times in peewee football. So I would just be so upset. I don't know why, like, whatever, you know what I mean? It gets yeah, you upset. Yeah. You're not supposed to let it, but at the time I'm like, you know, 10, yeah. 11 years old. So, I mean, I would just turn and crack these kids. I mean, it would be practice. I would just be knocking their helmets off. Like, I mean, it would be almost like 
not pure rage, but I would like, you know, keep it bottled up. And then when, you know, when shit came to shove, I would just try and take, or when games came, I would just try to level these kids. Or I would just look at it like, you guys want to call me the brown boy or like pick on my skin color. Like, I'm going to smoke you guys in the games. I'm going to be better than all your kids. I'm going to run faster. And it, that's kind of how it worked out. And I just had that like from football to basketball and that school's like, yeah. you know, the kid, none of the parents, like some, there was even like houses when I was little that I wasn't allowed to come in and get a drink in the summertime because <laughs> I was, because of my skin color. I was the only kid that wasn't allowed to go in and get a drink when we were tired. You know what I mean? And that like, put a bear on me and I would think about those things. So I mean, was- I mean, you'd be surprised to know, like, so me, you know, um, you know, I, I've lived in other countries, obviously besides America. Yeah. And yeah. you'd be surprised to know though, that racism is prevalent in you know, all around the world, even in places where there aren't, you know, you know, Caucasian people or whatever the case is. Like if you can have a society like even in Guyana, where I was born, I knew racism down there because the blacks and the, the black people and the Indian people didn't get along because of their skin color. Yeah, and I know I know there's colorism even within um, within com- communities of a certain race, you know, based on on who's darker than who and and stuff like that. And even if you don't have that, then you have people that are angry at other people because of how much money they have and the status that they have or their legacy that they have from their family or something like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And if you don't have that, then, Oh, I'm mad at you because I'm from America and you're from Canada. And I don't like Canadians. Like people just want to hate, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Like, I don't know, man. And when you're a kid, like one of the things with kids that kids want to belong, kids want to belong to something because kids want to be part of a group because we're used to being nurtured and having Mm -hmm. people with us. So when you're a kid, the last thing you want is to stand out from the crowd. You know what I'm saying? You want to just be able to do what everybody else is doing yeah you know yeah. as an adult you start to, you start to realize like who really cares what other people are doing first of all second of all who really yeah. cares what they think about what you're doing yeah yeah for you sure. know for, for sure. <laughs> instead, of look, for instead sure. of looking for for people to belong um people places to belong when you're an adult you sort of find out that you can just do your own thing and people who belong with you will find you you'll just find each other like like magnets you know like like yeah, you're all yeah. you're all shuffling around and like this attracts to like the way of like a planet is formed through gravity some people like, can't accept that idea though like they they'll find something that's like that that magnet doesn't attract to them and it's like pushing away and they're like and they want to force it <laughs> oh, man. i be saying that all the time which is like if somebody wants to go just let them go man. let like, them go Dude, I wish I learned that lesson a long time ago. I know you, you tried to warn me in previous relationships. <laughs> that <I did. laughs> But uh, I, I wasn't ready to listen, bro. I wasn't ready to listen. I, there's a lot of things I, I don't understand in my life. You know what I'm saying? So, but I'll tell you right now, man. Um, yes, I do have regrets for wasting my time in certain relationships. But I'll tell you what. Nothing like that fuel that I got from those experiences, man. Like, I, I, after those experiences, I felt like I had, like, jet fuel just <laughs> i was firing off i still feel like i'm firing off a jet fuel right now i feel like i'm rocketing through space i'm right next to you man we're up in space right now we're just flying bro <laughs> i'm telling you i'm telling you that's why i just i try to enjoy my ride while I'm, like just enjoy my wa- ride while i'm here you know yeah yeah i uh martial arts it, it keeps me sane it keeps me happy it keeps me peaceful oh yeah um, man. you know that's those are the things to me that are like it sounds like silly but you know I do, uh, and just enjoy them. They make me happy. They keep me at peace. You know, and I think a lot of people need to find at least an outlet or something to do. I think so. I think so. And yeah. exercise is one of those things, man. Like, like how addictive is that pain you feel, that soreness from working out? Like, when you feel that pain, you're like, man, I just, I did something. You know, right? you know, I know it's crazy, though, is I haven't gotten that in so long. <laughs> <laughs> you just work out so much. Your muscles don't even get tired like that, huh? Do you want to know what I like, though? What I like is, like, at the, towards, like, when, when you're both, everybody's dog shit tired. Everyone's just, like, they're at their last breath, but you still got that in you. You know what I mean? You're like, nah, like, I could just keep going. And that's, that's where I like to live at. And that's, mm-hmm. to me, that's, like, just a different level. And there's people out there that do live in that mode, and that's, to me, that's like a high. Like I get high mm. off of that feeling. It puts me in like a different, almost like dimension. 
I mean, it absolutely does. I mean, the thing about it is, is this. When you put your body through stress or pain, like you, you tear up your muscles or whatever the case is, mm-hmm. what actually happens is your body has to compensate for that pain um, by releasing dopamine, which is the same, the same um, chemicals that, that interact with your brain and, and your synapses when you, when you do, people do drugs. So that's, or, or when you have sex or whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying? It's just varying degrees of it and so on. But your serotonin levels get boosted because your body has to compensate for that pain and get you back to homeostasis. And okay. if, you get, if you do that enough, your brain starts to mold around that lifestyle. So like, even with doing drugs, I know it's more on a chemical level, but yeah. even with doing drugs, your brain molds around that desire and that need for it. So it's the same thing with exercise. Your brain just rewires itself and gets used to exercising and that just becomes your routine. Like, and that actually happens with almost anything that you make yourself get into. You just got to stay uh, routine oriented, right? I know that's one of the things we talked about. We talk about all the time. Yeah. Like how important is routine and, and sort of just repetition of, of, of pursuit? To, I mean, it, I used to be like, I, I am a creature of habit, but it's just, I think that just if once you find out, like, as much as I don't, Oh my God, I'm not, a, I'm not political, but I don't like Donald Trump. But there was a thing that he said many years ago, and it says, if you want to be rich or successful, stick with what you're good at. Mm. And if that couldn't ring true enough, like... Yeah, it's, it's so it, true. Yeah, I mean, you want to be happy or, you know, even rich at times, like, find out what you're good at and what you enjoy and just do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, people will gravitate towards you on the things, you know, like... I like martial arts. People gravitate towards me to train. I have, you know, many personal clients that, you know, I, I, get, I teach them weekly all the time, you know, and yeah. people start to see that, that joy that you have for something and they start to gravitate towards you. They'll spend their money with you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They'll do whatever they can to support you. And that's just that's true. Think more people. If they just take that ask that outlook in life, like don't just, do things for that paycheck so that you can buy that car so that you can impress the girl that's going to cheat on you for, <laughs> you know, some shitty weed and Hennessy. Like, you know, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. But, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, I, yeah, I just think, yeah, and that's, that's part of living your best life, which I'm all for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just doing what you like to do and, and have fun doing it, but also have it be something that's productive. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I feel like a lot of people, like, you can do a lot of things that you like to do that are just really just not productive, you, especially sure. if you do it in the wrong way. Like, like I, I talk to people all the time. I, you know, I used to be a huge video game addict, addict myself. Yeah. Um, but you can actually turn playing video games into a profit. But yeah. it's going to require this, a, a level of dedication that a lot of, yeah. a lot of people don't really want to put into it. They really just want to veg out and like, and, like, block out all their problems in life by just, like, going to this vegetative state like I used to do all the time for years. Really? I did that. Crazy. I didn't know that. Dude, that's, that slowed me down, man. I mean, really? I only, I only got off of video games. I'm going to say, um, so I'm going to say like in the fall of 2018, or not fall. Yeah. Fall or late 2018. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, that's when I finally got off of it, bro. Like I would have times where I would sit down and do nothing, like just not go to work. Not be, I was just depressed. You know what I'm saying? And that was, that was <laughs> my way. Of, huh? I didn't mean to laugh when you're like, I was depressed, but I was laughing more at the gaming habit. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure, man. I just essentially just sort of like vegged out and didn't want to tackle my issues at all. Just sort of <laughs> avoidance and just hope it goes away type of deal, you know? Approaching bills like that too, like, like you have like bills due and you're like, man, I'm just not going to pay it. Because mm-hmm. if I ignore it long enough, it'll go away. Like, <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> like dude, I, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of, you probably have never been in that kind of state, but just imagine, like, I'll tell you right now, somebody who's depressed, a lot of times that's how they think. Like, they just don't care about it. Yeah, yeah. And it's such a but weird I, thing, you know? I don't think I've been to that state, but I, trust me, like, I've been to those low lows where you're like, man, like, I don't think it could get much lower than this one. Like, yeah. And I think that everybody at some point in their life kind of just needs that, you know? Like, yeah. You know, it's it kind of yeah. matters how you bounce back, you know? Yeah. I mean, you hit rock bottom, there ain't no way to go but up, right? Like you talked about rock bottom, there ain't no way to go but up from there. Yeah, I got something good for you, though. Yeah, go ahead. What do you think about Joe Exotic? About who? Joe Exotic. 
I'm not familiar with Joe Exotic. Uh, what? Tell me about. Oh, you're yeah. not familiar with Joe Exotic. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not. Who, who is um, that? Have you heard of the Tiger King? Yeah, you know, I talked about the Tiger King, but you know, I never, dude, I, I just, I know I have not watched it, bro. I, it's on my to do list. As soon as I get done with Ozark, I'm going to move down to that. Uh, Ozark, <laughs> put that down. Yeah. The Tiger King, let me tell you. The Tiger the King, t- huh? The t- it's just about this just crazy yeehaw hick. <laughs> he's gay. He's got three husbands and a tiger. Yeah. And uh, he just, you know, he basically is just a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, smokes meth with these people, like wow. pet tigers, sells tigers, like breeds tigers. Like this dude, this dude lives like an ultimately extremist life, like just so unlike anybody else dude, in society. Petting, petting tigers, I mean, making ligers, you know, riding these things, like riding them. Dude, w- watch the documentary. Really? I mean, this this guy, I mean, is just batshit crazy. And if you just need. <laughs> Sometimes, like, I, you know, you need that, like, funny release. Like, man, yeah, that, you're right. to yeah. me, that is just, it's one of the funniest things of 2020. Um, <laughs> you're the first person I've heard talk about the Tiger King as, as a comedy. Is it a comedy or is it a tragedy? Which one is it? Um, you know, to me, it was pretty funny. I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I indulge in cannabis. Listen, you're the kind of person that would, that would watch a kid get his lollipop stolen and start laughing. So, I, in yeah. fact, you might be the person stealing the lollipops. I don't understand. You, you finding I, something a comedy is not necessarily a referendum. Of whether I that is. It in that type of state, man, it was. I, I never <laughs> laughed so hard. And then yeah. when I saw I had like six or seven episodes, I'm like, I, I can't, I can't believe this. So. Oh wow. No, I, I definitely want to get to it, man. I definitely want to get to it eventually here. I, uh-huh. I, I find some balance in my life and sort of stop working for once. Because honestly speaking, bro, I work. <laughs> if I'm not. So this is, this is what I do. Okay. I work as a nurse 40 hours a week. Then I come home and I mess with YouTube, whether it's recording or editing or whatever the case is. Yeah. Doing art or promoting or something like that. That I do for probably eight hours. And then all together. And then. If I'm not doing that, then I'm spending time with the, with the wife and kids. Um, I'll put on Ozark and I'll watch like five minutes of it before I, I'm in La La Land. <laughs> Just, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Because I want to get through that. Like I'll, I'll turn that on. I'm like, oh, time to watch Ozark. Next thing you know, <sighs> you know, just gone. <laughs> yeah, I remember Kevin Hart talking about that. Like he was on, uh, he was on Joe Rogan's podcast and he was talking about like all the, all the stuff he does, him and The Rock and people like that. Yeah. And uh, they were like, they were like, dude, like when do you sleep exactly? And they were like, the dude was like, I when I sleep, first of all, it's a luxury. But when I do, I just pass out immediately. Like I just get take naps whenever I can. Like I'll be sitting on a, and I'll be sitting waiting to go on a show and just take a five minute nap and just feel well rested when I'm done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, <laughs> it's a good skill to have. My my girlfriend yeah. says I can do it. That I could just you know when the time's right, I just turn my head off and go. And it feels good. I like that skill. You just, you just stay busy. Yeah, naps are good, man. That's so good. But I definitely want to get into the Tiger King, though. I definitely want to get to that um, at some point. Dude, the Tiger some... King. And it's great. When you watch the Tiger King, like, watch it, observe it, absorb it. Yeah. And then think about Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was doing the same thing. He, you know. Oh, yeah, he, you did that Tigers, didn't he? Bro, Mike Tyson, yeah. like, owned Tigers. I mean, ha- he had Tigers he would raise his cubs within his house, just like Joe Exotic. Yeah, he would yeah. wrestle and fight and, like, do little mini box. Like, look these things up. Like, there's videos of Mike Oh, I, I did know that too. I now you mention it. I do remember Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was a was a was a different kind of person too. And talk about a pendulum swinging. Like this dude was one like, was this way. And then now he's like the completely different person. Like how do you go from being like a like a, a savage weasel of some kind or, or like you, you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? Like Did you see his uh document or his interview with Sugar I believe it was Sugar Ray Leonard? No. He had an uh, interview with Sugar Ray Leonard? He had an interview with Sugar Ray, and uh, and he was talking about that. He's like, you know, now I'm this, like, lovable guy. You know, he's heavy in the cannabis industry. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's like, I look, and, you know, and Sugar Ray was asking him, he's like, well, you know, when you look back at that, that guy, that man, that, you know, that beast, like, what do you think? And, like, Tyson, like, broke down. He's like, now I just, he's like, that guy, he's like, he had a purpose. He was a killer. He was a savage. He's like, now I just feel like some old, like just a pussy. He's like, I feel like I'm this. So- I'm telling oh, you, it sounds like Tyson is making a turn back to the <laughs> old Tyson. 
He gonna start gotta, biting somebody's ear off pretty soon. It you sounds gotta like. watch it. It was, but it was really sad though. Like it, it yeah. wasn't like he was being aggressive about it. It was just like you could see the like sadness in his eyes and his emotion. He was crying, like broke down crying. Yeah. Just talking about like how he's not that man. He's like, I just, I don't feel like, you know. He's like, I used to be that intimidating force in the room. And he's like, now everybody wants to try to like laugh and shit at me and and it's. It's a really, if you haven't had the opportunity, I give you some so good references. What's, what's ultimately, Jordan, sorry, huh? go ahead. Um, I was saying, I was giving some references. Watch the Joe Exotic, but watch that okay. Mike Tyson documentary because it's, okay. it's another one that will move and inspire you. And those are, I think they're just good for, so it's good for people to watch things like that. No, um, yeah. Just try to learn about like Mike Tyson, the person beyond, you know, that killer, that savage. I mean, he had a few, uh, autobiographies he did um it was uh, undisputed truth he had one and two mm -hmm. um and they're really good it's just him talking about his life and what brought him up and to be the person that he is mm -hmm. um it's just super super interesting just to learn about you know what made mike tyson but yeah it was a good interview man if you if you have the opportunity check it out because it's it's sad you know it really is sad like so what's ultimately like like, what, what was he saying exactly? Is he, is he sad about his past or is he sad about his life as it is right now? He was sad currently about his life. He's like, I just feel like I'm a little confused. He's like, I don't feel like I have that purpose or that drive or that reason to wake up every morning. He's like, mm. I just, you know, and Sugar, Sugar Ray, I don't think he was trying to hit a real, uh, hit anything. It just happened that way. He was just like, when you see that man, like, what do you think about what what does that hit you when you when you look at that man and Tyson just broke down it was just it was sad it really like you see as you know for many years I, I think even when I had gotten into martial arts I like only identified myself as a fighter and I only identified myself as what I was um you know competing at or what level I was competing at or even how like people respected me like that was like my only number one thing. And I think that a lot of like, again, you know, like fighters and martial artists, like we forget that there's more to life than fighting. You know, there's family, there's relationships, there's just your own peace, your own happiness. And, you know, you hear Mike Tyson, he had that just real breakdown with Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, there was another one, Felice Herrig. I mean, she had another breakdown. She's like, I'm injured. I can't fight. I only identify as a fighter. And she broke down. She's like, I don't, I don't know what else I am. I have nothing. And I, I think it's just important for people in martial arts to not just sprint somebody through the ranks of, you know, becoming the world champion and, you know, being a fighter and being the toughest person, but teaching like some character, teaching some respect, you know, teaching how to help your neighbor, you know, just, helping your neighbors, helping them, you know, cinch that triangle up. It's more than just helping them get a better triangle. <clears throat> you know, you're, you're helping somebody that needed help and it's, it doesn't, yeah. you're not earning anything out of it. And I think That's we just, we forget about that. And a lot of people like, you know, even I, I don't think that John had enough people in his corner as he, you know, they just sprinted him up to be the, the top dog, the killer, but if he had just a few more people in his corner just saying, like, nah, John, don't do that. Like, no, we're going to get an Uber. Like, nah, that's not okay, you know? Like, and it's hard when you're the top dog, you know? Did, did Mike Tyson have that person? Probably not. Yeah, Probably he, he, had his, he had his trainer with Custom Auto. But when yeah, he passed but, away in the 80s, they, yeah. they said that was the downfall right there at the beginning. That was it. That was it. Because he didn't have anyone to answer to, you know? Yeah. So I think that as martial arts and people learn martial arts, I think – more of us got to focus on not just being the savage and not just being the killer, like building yourself as an individual, you know, like it's yeah. helped me become a better person. It's, it's honestly, it's helped me become a better fighter. It's helped me become more patient when I'm fighting. Um, yeah. You know, it's helped me learn more. I've learned more in the last three, four years than I've learned in the last 10 years, which I think kind of says a lot, you know, yeah. I'm like, Kind of just age and development. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, man. For me, I always say when when you hit thirty years old, for men, like first of all, biologically speaking, I, I've heard that um, you, your brain isn't finished growing or 
developing on, uh, until you're 25. Yeah. I don't know how true that rumor is. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe bro science, who knows? But um, but also for me personally, just from personal experience and what I've seen, I kind of feel like for men, it's probably 30. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like once you hit 30, like something like this, I know you're 32, so you you would probably speak on this. Like, dude, once I hit 30 and that first gray hair started showing up, bro, because first of all, my beard, my beard is completely, completely died. Like, if I didn't die, really, like, dude, my beard is died. Okay, if I didn't dye my beard, I would look like Santa Claus. Oh, so, you gotta get rid of that thing, man. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it for a little bit. I might shave it pretty soon because I'm, I'm, I gotta have my mask, with my uh, respirator mask, or my um, N95 fit my face a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Working with Corona patients and stuff like that, but it's so hard oh, to let this beard makes go. Me laugh. Don't let me get around you and you have a great beard because I'm gonna talk about it all night. <laughs> I look like a silver fox, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. maybe, maybe, maybe I've earned my, my, my beard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. So going back real quick, like you know, at 30 years old, usually for us guys, yeah. like we'll we'll sort of hit our crescendo and like all of a sudden, like oh crap, I guess I have to be an adult now. And I, that's the thing that surprised me about John Jones. Like, he doesn't seem to be hitting that thing because he's about the same age as you are. He's probably like 32, maybe 33. I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, he's still yeah, like, so. like, dude, at what point are you going to grow up and, and realize that you have a bunch of kids, you have so many responsibilities? Like, maybe being a knucklehead was fun in your 20s and your teens, but maybe it's like, yeah. I don't know, maybe take things a little bit seriously. Like, you're like the greatest fighter of all time, um, some people say. I don't know how true that is. I mean, he's really good, but, um, but yeah, man, like at what point are you going to like grow up and take things seriously? It's hard, man. It's trust me. Like, I think maybe not we all, but like I struggle with sometimes like just growing up and just always doing the adult decision, but it's just, if John could just rear back, I mean, I think he's got to get, he's probably got to get some, I don't know. I don't know what's going on out there. I don't know who he hangs out with or what he truly does, but. But you, you've seen him, I, you've seen him recently, haven't you? Like within the last couple of years, you've hung out with him or something like that or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, John is, he's, he's, he's just different now. He's a different person. Um, like how know, is he different? Explain it to me. John in high school, you know, I think when, when fame hits a lot of people, it's hard. It's, I think it's really hard to deal with, um, especially when you get a lot of money at a young age. It's a hard thing to deal with. And it's, I think that it's just hard when you don't get enough of people around you that are, that are maybe from like your core friends or those people that are around you just because they care about you. They're not really steering you like in the right direction. And it's, you know, they usually say it's only your true friends that are going to check you or, you know, like you, your real family members that are going to check you. And I, I just don't think that John has enough of that or maybe just not enough of that around. You think that's maybe, by design or like you think he wants to not have those people around him so he can be a boss or, or, or those people don't want to be around him because he's an asshole? I mean, it's, it's not – I don't think it's always by design. It's just – I think it's just – I don't know. I don't know how to call it because I, I don't know that if you give me, you know, a five, six fight win streak, I start knocking people the fuck out in the UFC. Like, I don't know for sure that you're going to, you know, hear about me in church every Sunday. And, you know, just you, I can't just go and co-sign and say that I'm going to be the role model citizen, you know? And like, at the end of the day, we're fighting, like we're fighters like that. I know that it's, like, John is not Helio Gracie. John is a fighter. You know what I mean? John is not the, you know, the master of, who, you know, like the founder of martial arts. John right, is, right. He's not like a Kung Fu, like Buddhist Kung Fu Shaolin no, Mon- he's Mon- not, Temple, <laughs> martial artist. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's not Sun Tzu, like, giving out chronicles of how to be a martial artist. You know what I mean? He's a fighter. Yeah, I mean, he presented himself like that, though. He did. He did. But, you know, I, I don't want... I don't think that people like, sh- like John is also as much as, you know, he fucks up. He also lives his life under a microscope. And, and why, what I say by that is that is there's always somebody watching. There's always somebody with a cell phone. There's always someone looking at him to slip up. And I'm not saying that gives anybody passes by any means, 
<laughs> but that has to be very hard to live by. It has to be. I, I know. I know that it has to be a hard way to live. And I think a lot of that is too is like you know he. I know you don't get caught your first time, like you know, doing something wrong. But he's just not very like he's not good at getting away with things. <laughs> like he gets away with some shit, but he's just he doesn't get away with the things, you know, and he doesn't have enough people in his corner to be like, Hey John, like, no, let's not do that. Or yeah. Hey John, let's not, you know, let's not drive with this or let's get an Uber. So you know, how, they, how would you do things differently in, in John's shoes? Like, let's say like your businesses take off and, and, and I, I know, you know, I suspect you're not looking to be famous. Mm-hmm. Uh, you stop me if you're wrong, but um, maybe you're trying to avoid that even, but like what, what would you do in his shoes differently? Like, you know, would you, would you just start calling your friends that you used to know from high school and be like, Hey, come hang out with me. Like, what would you do? In that situation. And, and I, you know, and I'm even going like right now I'm doing it. I, I'm just focusing more on family and just like at home, like your friends will be there for, you know, certain amount of times, like, you know, your friends, I'm not saying in just his situation, but a lot of situations, they're there when you're there to share drinks or to share drugs with them or to get them into the VIP, to pay for the bottles. Your friends are there, you know, to when you're going to help them get laid. Like, they're there, you know what I mean? But they're not usually there when you're in jail or, you know, when it's time to shell up some money to your attorney. Or It's just, I, what I'm saying with that is I find a lot of friends, like, they come and they go, like, a lot of the times and at the very end of the day like who's going to be there for you it's, it's going to be your family it's going to be okay. your dad it's going to be his brothers you know who are yeah. arthur who are chandler right um, right i from what i know from what i see he, he has a good mar- or, uh, relationship so that means his his girlfriend jesse like she's going to be there for him when when he gets or got arrested she's going to be the one to go and pick him up and she's going to be the one to drive him home and you know, sign the papers, you know, it's not going to be his friends that he was out partying with, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when he had to run away from that drinking and driving accident, like, how many of his friends do you think were going to keep him sheltered in and not turn him in, or were willing to hold him in when he was trying to hide out? Probably not that many, you know what I mean? But when you go out and see John at the bars, I mean, those people, everybody's up his ass, everybody's his best friend, everybody knows him. And I think like, okay. I've, I think I've just from the experiences and places I've been, I've been able to see like people that are on your team and on your side for the wrong reasons, because you can offer money, you know, you can offer drinks, you can offer a good time. I've seen that. And those, and as soon as, you know, like we know, and I was doing those wrong things, as I stopped doing those things, those friends faded away. They disappeared. They weren't around anymore. You know, and I saw that. You know, or when you get up yeah. into a jam, your friends point the finger at you. They don't even take the responsibility, you know? Mm. So it's, no. yeah. I don't trust people like that. I think you need to trust your family, you know, your girl, because that's who you should trust. You know, hopefully everything's good at home and shit, you know? Yeah. And, and, you're, and you know, you're close as brothers. Like, those are the people that truly care about him. And okay. as much as I see John, it, it's, it's sad, dude. It's, I, I, I hate to see him fail. You know, it's when he gets caught doing something like super wrong, like, yeah, he should be caught for that. But one of these days, it's just, it's not just going to be, you know, this arrest video where John kind of sort of gets out of it or, you know, just, you know, John did a little cocaine and then whoops, what's his name's ass the next weekend, Cormier's and uh, Gustafson's ass. Like, that's not going to be the cool story. Like, it's going to be a more serious story. And like, as much as like, I, I think I'm hurt by how John has acted through the years to, you know, close, I think people that care about him more than he, he knows um, that, that will make me really sad. Cause I, I don't really wish any type of doom on anybody bad. And like, again, like I've been there and I've seen the people that hang out around you for, kind of like for the wrong reasons, you know, what you can, like, cause at the time when, you know, when I was getting into trouble, I, I had a lot of expendable money. I had a lot of free time. I had a way, you know, I've, I've been able to have a way to talk with women in my years and I could bring them around me and shit. And that's like, I, you know, I slowly realized that that's why certain people were around. And when 
you know, things start to fizzle away or you stop, you know, offering those things or, you know, you're more busy or you can't, you know, help people out with their finances, you become completely expendable. And mm -hmm. so, so you're saying that, that family is more some, is something that you would say it would invest your time more into just because they're more reliable, more trustworthy or yeah, whatever yeah. the case is. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know, and I, and I mean, have, have your friends to do your things. You know, if you want to go out and party, go party. But, you know, at 30 years old, we got to learn how to party responsibly. Like, you know, like if you're a licensed holder and you're drinking, don't bring your gun out with you. That's just, it's, it's simple math. Don't walk around. Don't be toting your gun out when you're drinking. If you're going to go to the, and I like, listen, I hang out with, um, you know, I've, I've been friends with Arthur for years. We've been very close for years. And I mean, whenever we go out, we get an Uber. There's just not even a question about Who, it. Who's Arthur? That's, is that John Jones' brother? Yeah, that's, that's John's brother. brother? So, yeah, you know, okay. like when we go out, no matter where, wherever we were, you know, we would go and hit, you know, whatever city we were in, like going out places, Philly, wherever, New York. We just get an Uber. There's no, it's just not, it's not needed. It's not, you know what I mean? And like, I know if Arthur tells me to anything, stand down, you know, just chill out. Like, let's go home. Like I listen to Arthur because I know Arthur cares about me. <laughs> In the same sense, like Arthur, you know, Arthur's my close friend. Like, you know, if I come and I tell Arthur like, Hey, you know, like, just like, let's take it easy. Like it's, you know, like let's slow down or, you know, it's, we've had too long of a day like Arthur listens to me because he knows I'm not trying to take anything from him or I'm not trying to hurt him and I think that that's that's like a to me that's a good feeling you know what I mean that's yeah. you gotta have those people around you and if you don't have those people around you yeah it's not good you know because yeah. it's not a it's not a good place to be and I think unfortunately that's where John is he just doesn't have the right people around him yeah I mean, yeah, we're is... accountable for our decisions, that's for sure, but mm -hmm. you can help yourself out, that's for damn sure. My only fear <coughs> of him is, is um, you know, is, you know, with some of the increasing activities he's done and some of the things he's done in his past as far as, with you know, with accidents or what, and even before he got, became famous, like, you know, he got into trouble here locally uh, from what I hear. Yeah. I wasn't here to witness that or see that, but multiple people I know that grew up with him you know, <coughs> he got into a lot of physical situations with people and stuff locally. My yep. thought process is like, dude, like, <clears throat> um, don't hurt anybody. You know, that's my fear is like, I'm afraid of somebody like that. Like just, you're super talented. So you sort of, you kind of get, you skate over the laws and rules that are in place for, in general for the rest of us who don't have the kind of talent you have. You sort of just skate by. Yeah. Yeah, the consequences and like, okay, you keep doing that, doing that, doing that, doing that. Don't end up, please let nobody really be really hurt by me. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean, though. Like, it, it could be, it could be him that he hurts or somebody else. And then that's where it's like, <clears throat> that's where it's not, you know, that's, that's truly where I worry, you know, and it's, I don't want to see John get hurt, you know, like I don't want to see John hurt nobody and I don't want to see John suffer the consequences of any of these things at all, yeah. you know, and it's like people, I don't know, there is like systemic racism that that's something that just happens, period. And I feel like people almost like to see like the black athlete fail or him, you know, get it's like people are like, oh, I fucking knew it, that piece of shit. And I'm just like, man, like, I get it. I understand it. But I, I don't, I don't, as just someone that at least like had to experience just small bits of racism in my life, I don't want to see, just because I, like, I know him and I, I grew up with him, I don't want to see him fail. Like, I want to see him win. I, I don't like the decisions he's made. I don't, I don't co-sign them i don't think that they're smart i don't agree with any of those things by any means mm. and even me and john we've had our differences and i still don't want to see him lose you know i mean i want to see him win i want to see him you know like just clean it up a little bit like mm. you know like we i think as kids and youngers <laughs> in our teens and our early years like we've experimented to just whatever kind of levels of whether it be partying or just taking chances, it's just got to be the time where like you got to set some certain rules in stone in your own head. Like, mm. 
you know, if I'm going to drink, I'm not going to drive, you know, yeah. like if I'm going to be messing with my guns, I'm not going to be drinking, you know, like if I'm yeah. going to, if I'm going to be, um, I don't know, like, say, yeah. you know, you're going to follow the weed rules in the UFC, you know what I mean? Like you just got to yeah. know certain things that you're not going to cross. Like, you can't use cocaine while competing in the UFC. Just don't use cocaine. Like you yeah. just you can't do it. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't understand. There's certain simple things. It's like, we got to get these things down as adults or like, we're just going to yeah, yeah, at some point in our lives, we gotta we gotta grow up and and stuff like that. Now, speaking of which, um, be, you know, being a father of two and so on like that, like where where um do you see yourself in five to ten years as far as your family goes? Because I know you say you're focusing on that <coughs> as opposed to um, you know, so much friends or whatever the case is as you're getting older. So, where do you see yourself in five to ten years uh, moving forward? Um, to me, like. <sighs> I always say it like my my freedom and my time is is what the, is the most valuable to me. So right now, as it is, I'm building and developing these businesses online. Mm-hmm. Um, in five to ten years, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna be fully retired, um, but I, I'm gonna be extremely like capable to do just about whatever I want when I want. I, okay. And, and my goal in so many ways is to have my businesses brand and being run, um, but where I'm just running them from afar, doing right, the logistical right. work, um, kind of instructing people what to do, what to ship where, mm-hmm. you know, purchase orders. Um, that's that's my goal is just to be able to just kind of sit on my laptop, do my small work, my small logistical work, and that's it. You know what I mean? I like right now I do so I do I do work. I work a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people think like, oh, you get to work from home and you make a lot of money, da 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 like yeah, that's that may very may well be true, but I wake up right now. I wake up at like seven thirty a.m. and I work till maybe eleven to twelve at night. Mm-hmm, and I mm-hmm. mean, and I'm working throughout the day. I mean, mm-hmm. nonstop, just yeah. shipping orders, receiving logistical. It's it's nonstop, and the reason yeah. I do that is to be able to create myself that future and that that opportunity, just to be able to be you know where I have people running my business, not you know like managing them in so many ways yeah, yeah, yeah. them from afar like a little bit a little bit hands off so you're not you're not yeah every and day so that, dealing with the stresses and the grinds of it exactly so that yeah. i can have again more freedom because my free time and my time to just like you know like right now when i want to play call of duty i, I can i have work to do but yeah. i want to have that free time where i'm like i don't really give a shit if i play call of duty if i go here if i go there mm-hmm. so really my goal is just to get that extra that even more free time, that more flexibility to do what I want to do. And mm-hmm. whether it be either just chill out and just train martial arts when I feel like, which, you know, cause I train twice a day. That's a normal thing to me. I've been doing it for the last, I don't know how many years, three, yeah. four years, whether yeah. I have a fight or not. You know, it's yeah. just, just always, like, always ready to go. Always in shape. Just always. I just, I will train and I always like to train. So I'll, I'll train when I want. And if I feel as if, I want to maybe start different business endeavors. You know, I'll have that freedom and that free time to do so, but mm-hmm. that's yeah, my goal is just to have that extra free time and the capability to do, you know, things with my kids. And again, things with my family, like the people mm-hmm. that like matter to me. That's yeah. why I want to be around, you know, like, yeah, I'm with it, bro. I would it. I love, I love it. No, I, you know, I'm in the same, same, um, sort of, um, as far as my priorities go as well. My mind is centered around family. I like that about you. I like that. I see, yeah? I see that. I see yeah. that change in your eye. I yeah, see man. the twinkle in your eye. It made my heart warm. <laughs> <laughs> the twinkle in my eye. That might have that might have been just I just woke up or something like that. I might have had some, some No, some, some, no, I know I know what the twinkle in your eye is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean I've always been like a family oriented kind of person as far as like you know, wanting to um you know, wanting to I mean, when I met you, bro, we used to have a lot of fun, man. Like, we used to go out and party, and, and, and thanks to you, man, I, I was able to finally live my 20s the way I probably should have been living it, because before that, I was, like, like a little bit too buttoned up, I think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which, which I'm kind of buttoned up now, but now I think it's appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, it's appropriate now, but when I was buttoned up in my early 20s, I was like, no, no, I, I kind of need to just have a little bit of fun. And then I met you, and I was like, oh, but here comes the fun. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, you remember me like sticking my head out the car in uh, in Cortland after going to like the sorority party and like I love Cortland. <laughs> you remember that? He said, "I love America." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what happened to my accent? It went away. I don't know what happened. Oh my god, man! You met man. I met you like early, like CNY MMA. I was like boxing with Danny. Yeah, 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 that, that yeah. one. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, we, you know, we go ahead. Just driving around, like that was early days, man. Like mm-hmm. we would drive up to like Syracuse. Yeah. Um, my well, yeah, we used, to, we used to train in Syracuse too. We drive back and forth. Yeah, but now we would we me and Dan we would box up there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, it's crazy because I I remember like this was after I had come home. I still had like some of my sentencing to do, so yeah, I had I had to go to work, go to the gym, and go straight home. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. And this is more than ten years coming out. I don't think I've ever said this on not many people, but I had at the well, you knew I had that ankle bracelet on. Yeah. So, so when I would train, I would have to wrap it up with pre wrap. Mm-hmm. The ankle bracelet was a monitor. I had to be home at a certain time for yeah. eight months after I got sentenced. So I went in for like eight, and then I had to stay home for another eight. Mm-hmm. And so we would go up and box, and like we'd come up to Syracuse, and we would have to actually ask the other guy if he would box me with the ankle bracelet on, which was really <laughs> funny because I yeah. got to the point where I would like to watch to see how it hit their face. You know what I mean? Like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to, I like to see their reaction. Here comes, here comes stealing Mr. Lollipop Man again. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody out there, don't don't ever leave leave your your uh, your lollipop out. This guy will take your oh, lollipop. Oh man, I just like to see their reaction. You know, and I was like, oh man. Fuck him up. I, you know, it was just, but uh, yeah, little, man. Little young knucklehead, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. I was like 20 years old, and that's yeah. that was how we got, you know, yeah. into like fighting and whatnot many, yeah. many years ago, man. Yeah, man. Hey, man. So I'll tell you what, brother. It's good to catch up with you, and, and I hope that you're staying corona free. <laughs> And stuff like that. I hope you're loading up on your water and things like that. I did hear you coughing a few times here on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe you should do some shipping and ship yourself with some bottles of water and some, some vitamins or something Listen, like that. Listen, I got a bottle of water here. The coughing is to my bad habits. Okay, Everything okay, I got you. I got you, bro. <laughs> I know you take care of yourself. You're better shape, way better shape than I am. I know that for sure. So I I've only been chilling during this this um, Corona because I'm like I'm always hurt. I'm always injured. When I found yeah. out this was like great, like Corona hurt, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna chill out with my injuries, recover, yeah. and that's it. You know? Yeah. When it comes back, we will be back in the gym. We'll be back in the lab, ready yeah. to get after it. I I gotta get back in the gym at some point here. You know, my priorities have shifted a lot, but I do need some more balance in my life. I what I actually was doing before the corona it was I was jogging a lot. I mean, that's how yeah. I've been losing weight. That's um, see that hurts your body though. I think I think if you <laughs> overdo it, like I wasn't really overdoing it, but it's like a new challenge. Like like I I grew up since my early teens like being a weightlifter. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to enjoy lifting a lot of weights and things like that in my 20s. Like even when I did MMA, I was fighting at heavyweight. Um, I ate a lot, but I worked out a lot too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, was I remember. Was I remember <laughs> with, the, with the whole the whole you ate a whole rotisserie chicken. And, <laughs> and you said it's protein, bro. I said, what? <laughs> yeah. How times have changed. I don't even do that anymore, bro. I don't. I don't, I don't want to sit there like <laughs> like I I went out. So I I got some dinner before work. And the other day, and guess what I got yeah. like for for lunch for work? Tell I got falafels, got... falafels and rice, bro. <laughs> you're not you're not about the falafels. I don't eat falafels. <laughs> 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 to be honest, because I don't, I almost don't like to admit this, but I eat like almost anything I want. Yeah. The problem is, is that I, I work out like well twice a day. I'm a high. I'm always moving. Like I don't even yeah, really yeah, yeah. Like, calories in versus <laughs> calories out. Exactly. So I, yeah. I get that flexibility, kind of eat what I want. And, uh, pretty. I remember. You know, I remember coming to visit your house. I don't know what it was like last year at some point, and I remember you were like, "Hey, man, I got a cookie to eat." And I look, and it was like a whole muffin top. <laughs> like you had like. I was like, this is the biggest cookie I've ever seen. I didn't say nothing to you back then. I'm like, this is the first time I'm saying it to you. I was like, that's the biggest cookie I've ever seen in my entire life. This cookie was the size of my big ass head. <laughs> so I know you eat whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> You still eat pizza, man? I know you love you some pizza. 
Yeah, hell yeah. Pizza all the time, man. Pizza I used to I used to come visit your apartment back in the day. Like you there'd be like ten boxes of like empty boxes of pieces lined up outside. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy, man. You yeah. you really got to see me evolve, I feel like, from yeah. shit. Oh yeah, man, for sure, man. I mean, we've been friends for a long time. I'm sure we're gonna be friends for a lot for a lot longer too. A lot, I'm sure we're gonna be friends a lot longer than we've been friends already. We've been friends like almost eleven years. So. Yeah. yeah, man. So yeah, man, I, I, I like to. I'm so interested as to like your new love. That's oh, what yeah? I'm. Yeah, man. What do you mean? It's I because I saw it hit you and it it hit you like. like <laughs> Like a tidal wave, like you, I mean, you were worried too, huh? You thought you no, thought I was making a big mistake. I listen, hey, you don't gotta say that. <laughs> I know you thought I was making a big mistake. You like, I just, you're like I you just met this you, woman and you're already getting married. Like, what yo, are you doing? It knocked you off your feet, and I just, I wanted to be there to catch you, and I, I was yeah. there to catch you despite it crushing me. I would have had your back. Yeah. No, but, I mean, yeah, man, but I, you know what though? I'll tell you, son, right now, I need you to admit the truth, okay? <laughs> The things that I'm doing right now, did I or did I not say it? That's what was going to happen when I, when I met you. Yeah, you basically manifested this to truth. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't know. You didn't know I was one of those people, did you? This is true. I'm surprising the shit out of you. I know that. I, I enjoy watching you be surprised by me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't believe it. I, I think yeah. I even talked to Brian. I was like, yo, did you talk to him? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I, I'll tell you something right now. The thing about me is this. I... I, okay, I, this is going to sound super conceited, okay? And I apologize. That's okay. Husband, I'm, a conceited, really okay. I'm a conceited person too. That's okay. all right. But I'm not conceited. Well, maybe I'm a little bit conceited. But you got you to gotta love yourself. Fuck that. I do yeah. love myself. But yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. Man. I know my weaknesses, but I know my strengths too, okay? I, most of my life, I've actually dumbed down how intelligent I am. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because... Because I felt like people who are intelligent are not fun. Like, they're, like, boring. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, like, I would, like, literally, like, when I was in school, I would, like, spend the whole year not studying, not doing homework, and just partying and, having like, having fun and, like, not doing homework. And just, like, I didn't have to study to, to pass. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to get A pluses or A's, I had to study. So I'm, I'm not a yeah. super genius. Like, I'm not like, yeah. you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson or something. But I could literally get by the entire year and not do any homework or any projects. And I would, like, I would like do it the day before, and it'd be done. And I was, it would be enough for me to get, like, a passing grade, and I'd be satisfied yeah. with that. Whereas there were people who would be doing their projects, like, three months prior. And I'd yeah. be like, why am I doing that? I want to go outside and do karate. Like, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah I know so what like, you mean, bro. Yeah, so I, I used to be one of those kids that would, like, hang out with the dudes that, not knocking shop or anything like that, or, or guys who were in agriculture, which is, like, farmers in the Caribbean. <laughs> but those guys, those guys typically didn't get the best grades. Yeah, but, yeah. man, were they fun to hang out with. Like, they were just into, like, all types of nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were the ones chasing girls. They were the ones swinging from branches and jumping into the river. And all the dudes that were getting A's, like, like they were like going home and like sitting down with their button ups and doing homework and stuff. Yeah, I'm like that's yeah, for the yeah. birds. Like I want to go out and get into a fight, <laughs> have a good time, you know. So I yeah. literally used to like dumb down my intelligence because if I talk to people about some of the ideas and things I had or some of the things I was into, because yeah. I was always into art and things like that, but I never really showed anybody. I would just do it and keep it to myself, and my family knew about it. And my family was like, "Why aren't you doing this? Everybody can see it." I'm like, "Yeah." I just want to, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to like yeah. seem like a wise ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, yeah. it finally got to the, hit me when I hit 30, when I was like around 30, but like really only a couple of years ago, I was like, why am I hiding my true self? Like, why, why did I just be myself all the time? Ah, it's so much easier, isn't it? Dude, it's great, bro. Like I've never been happier <laughs> in time. All that anxiety and depression I talked about that I had, that is gone now. Man. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm running like at 200 miles an hour, 24 seven. Like I should have yeah. been all along. That's that's it's a good point because like people stress about like do people like me or are they gonna want to do they want to be around me am I fun enough am I funny enough you know do I provide a good time and it's like yeah that's too stressful it's just yeah. it's too much work it it really is it really is and and you know the law of attraction works in in all the different kinds of ways and the wonderful thing about about living your best life is that we were talking about it earlier I actually now people who who are more 
I, okay, so I thought that the people who were intelligent were not fun and the people who were unintelligent were fun. Mm. And while that is true sometimes, people who are intelligent, if you so act you thought, like yourself. You thought it was fun, excuse me. Well, uh, yeah, I knew you were fun, but I knew you were ambitious too. That's why we're still friends today. There's a lot of people that I was friends with back in the day. I'm not friends with them anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I like the way you, the way you, how motivated you are. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, we'll share ideas on, on ways to get motivated and, and, and people who are motivated that we can watch. You know, iron sharpens iron, stuff like that. And I always like the way you talk about being like owning your own business and things like that. So I was like, this is a dude, like, I, could, I, could, I should stay friends with this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my thought process. Listen, to, if you don't listen to Gary V, like listen to him. And it's a lot of the stuff he talks about, it seems like it's improbable. Um, but to me, I don't know what, mo- like, I don't, I don't know. Like I, like I said, I had a lot of people that tell me I couldn't do things. <coughs> I had teachers that just really gave me a hard time. Like, you know, they would be like, you need to learn trigonometry or you're like, you're not going to succeed in life. And I'm like, listen, I bet you I will. Like I, you know, I, I'll, I'll probably be all right. And not to go against teachers, but I, I just had so many people that would just tell me that you can't do things or you won't make it. Or I, you know, I would tell them when I was younger. I was like, Nah, I'm gonna be a pro fighter. Um, you know, I'll probably own my own gym and just run my own businesses. Like if I need to learn trigonometry, I'll just hire someone. Like as crazy as that sounds, you know what I mean? But if I need someone to tell me like super mathematical scientific shit, I'm going to pay for that at this point. You know what I mean? No, I, I'm with you there. Like I, I know even in my case, like, you know how, I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of women say they're like a man who's hands on, who's like going to like a handyman. Like he's going to like, yeah. if something breaks in the house, like he's just on it. He has his tool bag and all this other stuff to fix it. I was like, you know what I say to people? I, and I know it, every time I say it to a woman or whatever the case is, they look at me like, like I'm like, I don't know, I'm, I'm a low or a scum or I'm like, a, I'm like essentially like a pussy or something like that. Like, I would be like, listen, I don't want to go fix a toilet and fix a sink. I'd rather just pay somebody to do it. I, and I'll go do a job that will pay me enough money that I can afford to, do, to pay that person. So yeah, therefore, yeah. he has a job now. So I'm helping people out because <laughs> they have a job. Like, I'm paying someone to do the job. But there's things that I'm doing that they can't do. So are we going to yell at this dude because he can't do the things that I can do? You know what I'm saying? Like, why is it like, why are we designating this as being what a man should be doing? No, I don't want to do that. You know what I want to do? I want to go sit over there and paint. Like, I want to go over there and draw. Like, I want to go over there and make some art. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to go edit a video. I want to go make a song. Like, for me, that's, like, why do I, why am I doing things that people think that I should be doing? Why don't I do what I want to do? You know, like just and do what you enjoy to do. Just yeah. true. Yeah, exactly. I end up on YouTube trying to figure everything out, like putting up. Yeah, lads. me too. That's how I learned things, but. dude. That's how I learned to make a YouTube channel is by watching YouTube. Like, <laughs> like dude, I heard some idea the other day. Somebody was telling me today is like they were like, um, oh, I don't know if um I have it in any in me anymore to to do this kind of thing anymore. I don't know if I still have the 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 knowledge anymore. I'm like, well, if you don't have the knowledge, acquire it. Like, go, go on YouTube and watch a video on how to do it. Like, I don't understand. Like, like who, who just is born knowing how to do something? I don't understand. Dude, I, I, when I worked at Empire Vision, I became a licensed optician. And, like, they gave us a bunch of books to learn off of. Like, I use the books a little bit, but I use mostly YouTube and the Internet to get my yeah. license. To learn yeah. all the optics of the eyes and how everything works. And mm-hmm. So you can, yeah, you can learn a lot. Like a it's lot. an incredible resource, man. Like I, I'm about to step my game up with these videos here pretty soon. And yeah. all of it is I, it's either from watching videos on YouTube or thinking about how to replicate what that person is doing. Yeah, or I try, yeah. to, I try to innovate too. Like you can't be an artist and not innovate. So I, I come up with my, my own structure and my own way of doing things so I can kind of stand out from the crowd. So in general too, you know, you can get a, get a foundation by learning mm-hmm. from other people, but also innovation is cer- certainly a powerful tool so that you can stand out and you can bring something new to the table. Right? Something different, right? I yeah, always like, have what, a battle, though. Like, is it is it about being unique and innovative or is it just being good at, like, which, like, you, they, like, there's a gazillion people that are DJs, but there's a few DJs that are really fucking good at DJs. You know what I mean? There's, like, a million grocery stores, but we all go to Walmart you know, Costco and whatever, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. it doesn't always have to be so like, that's no, no, I mean, I, I don't mean to say that. I'm not trying to say that. Yes, you can't, you have to always come up, do something different. 
yeah. but there's different kinds of people in the world out there and there's some people that that are really good at following formulas and stuff and stuff like that and there's some people that are great at creating formulas yeah um and both people serve their purpose in the world you know what i'm saying that's how knowledge is passed on knowledge is passed on through books through through teaching and through replication uh, replication so you see somebody doing something correctly and you go ahead and you you imitate that and and so on but there's other people out there whose thought process is, I also want to create a formula that other people follow. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so yeah. everything serves a purpose in the world. I'm not here to say that it will, any one thing is better than you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. But <clears throat> I'll tell you right now, we're, 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 right, we're right approaching two hours and stuff like that. And I, I hate good. to blow my computer and then have to send you the bill. Um, <laughs> Since I know you, you right now, you're kicking it up right now, okay? Over there. <laughs> I'm playing, but... Yeah, man. So, hey, bro, it was really wonderful having you on, bro. I know we tried to do it a few times. We couldn't catch time. I know you're busy as hell, and I am as well. So, but I was, I'm really happy that we were able to find time to, like, really link up and get something done proper. And I really want you to come back on in the future. Maybe we can do, like, a group thing with a couple of other friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I got on with you. And I, I love seeing you grow through the years. It makes me happy, I'm telling you. Same, same thing with you, man. Same okay. with you. That, that dude that I met that just came out of prison with the ankle lock and all this other stuff, you're not that dude anymore. You're doing your thing. Dude, it was, hard. You got let me tell you, I tell people, like, I, I was just a fucking idiot. So when they feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't really know what's going on. I mean, at 20 years old, like, I was just, I mean, like a baby in an adult's outfit. Like, yeah. so, you know. Yeah, I, you were still but, a kid, man. Just because somebody told you that, you had some hair on your face and now you're a man. Doesn't mean like you're a man. You know what I'm saying? Man, let me tell you, I knew everything, man. And, and then I, oh man. I just think if I can make it all like a good point to people is just try to stay close to your family. Even be careful with friends, you know, like keep people close, but you know, work on your home. Cause at the end of the day, like when you come home from the bars, you're by yourself. Or, you know, if you get in trouble, you're, who's there? Your family, you know, you, you gotta create a home. Try to make your circle, like, make your circle tighter. There's a thing I said the other day. It's audit your circle, add one winner, decrease one loser, and repeat. And just keep doing that. The more you can add somebody good and get rid of somebody toxic or somebody, like, not helping you or, you know what I mean? Just somebody low on that. This, this is why I love talking to you, man. Like, I, like I do learn a lot of things from you as, uh, as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do listen to you uh, very much. I don't always say that, but I do listen. I drop people more than, and I don't even let them know I drop them. I just drop them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? So that, Yeah, you that, do, do some pruning if you need to, huh? Dude, do it all the time. Like, the more you Isn't can that what they do with bonsai trees and they're considered beautiful? And they live yeah. for thousands of years because people do, the people do a lot of pruning with them? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I don't know much about it. Didn't you try to buy one of those? Um, maybe. Maybe I will eventually. <laughs> it, it doesn't look like... it. Look, I look like a guy that, that would buy a bonsai tree, don't, don't I? I thought you did buy a bonsai tree. No, I, no I never had one. I've been to bonsai I, gardens and stuff like that, but I, I've never bought one. I have a cactus that I'm trying to grow that I'm pretty excited about. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, don't prick your finger on that thing. No, no, I don't even know what I'm doing, but it's a cool cactus and it yeah. makes me happy and it's kind of like my little baby, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Well, I, hey, thank you for joining me, man. I appreciate you coming on and uh, well, yeah, we'll catch up later on, man. For sure, man. All right, let me, let me get, get into this Tiger King, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll catch you later, later brother. All right, brother. All right. Please search on YouTube for Just a Thought Vlog and follow us on social media.